have to switch back one more time, but whatever. We're going to do the best we can. Um, yeah, it's fine. I think the internet is overloaded right now. Yeah. Uh, so so people there, might on a, it. there might be a little lag, but we'll work with it. Um, it's so frustrating. The okay. con my connection just, it, like for months, it'll be horrible. We'll have the people come look at it. No one ever figures anything out. And it, then it's okay for a little while and it starts all over again. It's been like years yeah. it's been happening. Yeah, it's like our bodies. Oh, fucking hell. All yeah. right, well, let's start so we don't uh, push our luck here. Um, yeah. All right, so state your name, something about you, and then the last time you were scared. And by scared, I mean like spooked, like you, you jumped. Okay. Uh, my name is Lauren Iden. I enjoy miniature things. And the last time I was scared and I jumped. I think it, yeah, I think it was when I was watching a, a really bad horror movie. Well, I, I thought it was really bad. The Invisible Man. The original? Uh, no. Oh, okay. I think I, this one came out in 2020. Oh, yeah. okay. I know what you're talking about. I didn't, I didn't particularly like it. I thought it was pretty stupid, but it made me jump. I mean, you know, there were a couple jumpy moments, so yeah. The original Vizzle Band, I fucking, have you seen that? I haven't seen it. So good. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. It's freaking bonkers. I mean, it's off the wall. So many people die in it. It's crazy. Really? <laughs> yes. I think, I, I'm not positive, but I think he kills more people than any other universal monster. Really? So, yeah, because he, I don't want to say too much. Well, I mean, it's okay. so freaking old at this point. It barely matters. He derails yeah. like an entire train and like shitloads of people die. Oh, that's fun. And I'm like laughing about it. I, I'm not, I don't delight in death, but it's just a crazy movie. Yeah. Um, where are you right now? Uh, I'm in my house. There's a, like a, a room that I have with uh, this. So we remodeled this house several years ago. This was my, my, my grandparents' house. Okay. They built it you know, like in the forties and then raised my mom and her brothers here. Anyway, we remodeled it a few years ago so we could move in because it hadn't been touched in like 75 years. And all this wood behind me is like various pieces of like reclaimed wood from throughout the house when we remodeled it, oh, collected all so this wood cool. and put it up there. Yeah. That was your idea? It was. That's a great idea. I love that. Thanks. That's Thanks. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, These are all the colors that it was painted over the years. So I know you're a power lifter. Mm -hmm. And I, it's kind of obvious that I am too. And I just want yeah. to say like, my favorite part is uh, of the lift is like the lockout. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I just looked that up. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> that uh, is everybody's favorite part because that's when you, you get the, the three white lights that say, yeah, it's a go. You locked it out. You're good. And everybody cheers. That's everybody's favorite part. Uh, I, could you teach me some other lingo? Like I, I looked at, I saw like bombing out, like teach me like four things. Okay. Um, Sometimes, so yeah, locking out is one. Um, uh, coming up out of the hole, you have to get out of the hole. Okay, that's what one. does that mean? So that means when you get to the bottom of a squat and then come back up, that's getting out of the hole. Gotcha, okay. The point where you reach the lowest part of your squat and then coming back up, that is often the hardest part. And once you can get past that part, you're usually good to go. Okay. Um, oh, what's, what's a couple other, another one? Window or well, I guess two. we should say what lockout means, right? Yeah, lockout is when you, you know, you, you, if you're deadlifting and you stand up fully with the bar and your knees are locked, they're not bent, and your hips are locked, they're not bent. That means you have fully completed the, the lift. Or if you're bench pressing, if your arms are fully extended straight, you have so it's the opposite the of, and the you whole. have to reach that point. That's right. Mm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know your shit. Uh, yeah. So that is when you have completed the lift, and the judges either give you a yay or nay. But um, and uh, yeah, what are some other some other? If you can't think of any on the. You know, sometimes spot, you that's hear. Fine. Sure, sure. Sometimes you hear people say like three white lights. So you've got three judges there, and you have to get at least two out of three white lights. They either white light you or red light you. You have to get at least three white lights for it to be a, a good lift. Okay. Or excuse me, at least two out of three white lights for it to be a good lift. Um, yeah, there's a few. Now, do you, do you, you've, you've done competitions or? Mm -hmm. Have you won? I have. I have won. I got first place um, either once or twice. Wow. Uh, and then my other competitions, I've gotten either like second or third place. 
That's I've awesome. placed, I've placed pretty well in my, in my weight division. Yeah. When did you, uh, I have not done that? well, uh, about two years ago. Oh, okay. Fairly recently. About two years ago. Yeah. And you usually do, you know, people usually do like three lifts or three meets, three competitions a year. Cause you have to, you know, space them out enough to train for long enough between each one. Right. So, so I'll tell you a little bit about powerlifting. I know you're, you're not, you're a little fuzzy. So yeah, uh, tell me. So it does, it does seem to be based on the tiny bit I know about like the sole focus is about developing just as much strength as your body can achieve. Right. That's right. So do you think you're close to your limit at this point? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. So, I mean, it's like, you know, I'm 37. Mm -hmm. So uh, honestly, you know, like when you're like kind of in your, in your genetic prime, if you will, you know, yeah. it's like twenties, thirties, I'm kind of reaching the, the, the upper end of that. Right. So I expect I'll maintain some good strength throughout my life if I keep doing it. But I think I've probably reached close to my like genetic potential. And I was also reading that like powerlifting specifically is pretty good to get into for almost, almost like an all ages thing, like other, other, yeah. Is that, isn't it considered a sport? That's probably a dumb question. It's not a dumb question. I mean, it's, there's a quite, you know, the whole question about sports, right? It's like, it's like whether or not golf is considered a sport. Right. If there's no, it might be competitive, but if there's no, like, what is it like physical I combat, guess, yeah. I, I guess, I, is yeah, that what they call I it? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't either. But like in your circles or whatever, is it considered a sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's considered okay. a sport, I'd say. It's not okay. an Olympic sport. Um, right. There are other forms of weightlifting that are Olympic sports, but it's not, powerlifting is not one of them. I don't know right. why it should be. Um, but uh, yeah. Okay, so yeah. So back what I was trying to say then is like pretty much I was reading that as far as sports go, it's a good one to get into because you can push it further along in life and still do fairly well. Whereas totally. like some of the sports, you're, you're kind of broken down at that point. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And it's, you know, like any, any age can do it. So there's sort of a, like an open division, which is ages, you know, eight, 18 to, I don't know, like 45 or 50 mm -hmm. or something. Um, and then there's a junior division that's younger than 18. And then there's a master's division, which is older than, you know, the upper end of, of the mid range group. Um, so yeah. And you're just competing against other people that are in the same weight in the same age and weight class as you. Right. And uh, so, yeah, it's a pretty low uh, barrier to entry. So it's, yeah. it's it e easily accessible to pretty much anybody who wants to do it and compete. They might not right. place well, but they can sure as hell jump in. Right. I usually uh, insist on doing above my weight class because I'm just that good. But yeah, yeah, yeah. for the most part, you do your own weight class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, did, the, uh, did the age thing factor in at all to you getting into it? Like, was that a factor at all? Or is that just, it is what it is? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Just, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Let's talk injuries. What do you got? <laughs> uh, I've been pretty lucky in that I haven't had anything too crazy. All of mine is like minor aches and pains shit that just bugs me. You know, like I've got a knee that's bugging me and a mm. like upper back thing that's bugging me and a, and a lower back thing that's bugging me. Those three things. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nothing that keeps me from being able to move. I've never broken anything. I've never torn a ligament or Damn. anything like that. So I've, I've fared pretty well. So you've never not been able to lift, like, because you were hurt, no. even for something that has nothing to do with lifting. You just haven't experienced that yet. That's right. Okay. I've never, I've never broken anything in my life. I've never, like, seriously injured myself. I've never Damn. had a surgery. Have you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, I'm a freaking idiot. Uh, Are you used to skateboard? You probably yeah, hurt yeah. yourself skateboarding. Yep. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and rollerblading when, when I used to do that a little bit, I, I, I just did some dumb, dumb shit. Uh, yeah. I, I also was, um, when I get angry, I used to punch things. Mm -hmm. Never, never a person except for myself. I did hit myself, but, uh, I would punch things and, and in the, in the heat of the moment, I didn't always realize what I was punching. So I broke my hand, punching uh, something. I've yeah. broke walls open. I've given myself black eyes, but let's not go down that road right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I, can I, I ask you one more lot. question about it? Yeah. yeah can yeah. I ask you one more question? So yeah. when you punched yourself, did you, yeah. did you hit yourself as hard as you could, or did you kind oh. of uh, hold back a little bit? No, like, no, no. I, not I even a little punished, bit. I punished my, there's a, there's a select few friends who've seen it happen. And, uh, it's, it's brought up time because it's happened. I used to do it all the time. Like it was, mm -hmm. it was my go-to reaction if I was upset, uh, especially if, 
because like all this boiling uh, regret, even when I was young, I had so much regret and this anxiety that was right here. So if anything happened, even something small, it would all come bubbling up. Uh, it would just happen. Yeah. Uh, I've sent myself to the hospital before. Um, I've, I sprained my neck muscle from, uh, I got, Ooh. yeah, I was like having neck pain that day. And so that was like, all day annoying me and then something happened and it pissed me off so I went to crack my neck really hard in mm -hmm. anger mm -hmm. and boy was that a mistake uh yeah. really bad <laughs> yeah I've done some so you've been injured yeah yeah yeah. and it was all, it was mm -hmm. not all me punishing myself it was all also me trying to do something funny and it going horribly wrong and I broke my foot and I like that. <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> um do you think at this point, if you couldn't lift for like a week or more, you'd get super antsy about it, or do you think you'd be pretty good with dealing with it? Uh, I think it depends on the, on the, just kind of like my general mindset at the time. Mm. Sometimes uh, after I've had a long stretch where I've been, you know, lifting a lot and working really hard, sometimes mm. I need a break from it mm. and I need to not lift for like one or two weeks decompress, deload, right. and, and then come back to it. And then sometimes if I'm like in the middle of a, of a really, again, I'm making a, like a lot of progress, I'm just really kicking ass. And then something keeps me from working, you know, from lifting for, mm. for a week or something, I'll get, I'll get antsy. Right. Right. So it kind of depends on how well I'm like flowing in that moment. If, if I'm, you know, on the up, then it'll piss me off. If I'm, right. <laughs> if I'm starting to burn out, I'm like, I put it on the back burner for a couple of weeks. So you said you've been lifting for two years or you've been competing for two years. I forgot. I've been competing for two okay. years. How long have you yeah. been lifting? Um, five. Okay. So still fairly recently. Still relatively recently. Like I didn't start lifting until I was in my thirties. Wow. What so, got you yeah. into it? Uh, I think I, you know, I was just like, it was, it was one of those things where I was like, I think I'm supposed to work out. You know, people say you're supposed to do that to you know be healthy and stuff, but I don't know what to do. So I, you know, I I went to a gym and hired a trainer, and uh, got super super into it. Like it, it felt good. It was yeah. you know good, good, uh, good way to release some aggression. I've always been super not confident and mm -hmm. like just like always want to just kind of like retreat and not be seen and not be heard, and uh, lifting just gave me confidence in like just being able to do hard shit over and over and over again. And that like translated to every other area of my life. So. Has your relationship with your body like changed because of this or? Oh yeah. What, what was that like through... before you started lifting? Where like, what was your relationship? Where were you at with your body? Oh God. <laughs> you, you can get as, as deep uh, or as shallow as you want, whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I mean, I think it's safe to say that I probably, I, I think, I think a lot of people uh, don't like our bodies. I think mm. a lot of us don't like our bodies, you mm. know, because of like messages that we've been given our entire lives, I think especially women. I, I think men too. I think men too, for sure. Mm. Uh, I think women are just, you know, we're very much told that our worth is, a lot of our worth is attributed to our, our appearance, right? Mm. And, uh, so I was like iffy about my body. I didn't, I wasn't like self-loathing, but I didn't, you know, I kind of like pick myself apart in the mirror and stuff mm. like that. And, yeah. Um, and then I started lifting and, uh, you know, I, I kind of got this body that everybody like was paying attention to all of a sudden. And they were like, Oh, you know, I want your arms, your back is amazing. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And all this positive attention feels really good. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, Oh, thanks. Yeah. Um, and then it became a thing that, but, but to do that, you know, you have to, you have to work really hard and you have to manipulate what you're eating. And then you just create like disordered eating behaviors. And uh, it, it has taken me years to undo these disordered eating behaviors. Mm. So I've gone through like different phases with my relationship with my body and how I treat it. Um, yeah. So, so is your, do you think that, if, okay, so I'm, I'm trying to word this in my head here. So you're saying that you got this sort of like almost semi eating disorder from do you think that was mostly due to the compliments you were getting or was it also like what you were seeing in the mirror like i need to maintain this i like how i look uh both i would honestly say i would say that it was more well yeah it was it was like game combination right it was i was seeing it in the mirror and i was going i like how i look i need to maintain this 
And also other people are telling me like all of a sudden people are commenting on my body. So like, okay, this must be good. Yep. I've got to maintain this because if I don't, I'm going to lose whatever, you know, clout. I've just all of a sudden, all this social cred that I all right. of a sudden have. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause there's just like this little piece that I have copied here. I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm, I was planning on reading the whole thing. It's like a paragraph. I'm like, is that going to be boring as shit? But I'm going to read it and I, I, cause I, I am going to go somewhere with this. I'm going to be boring. J- j- it's just the, the idea yeah. of like, because the, the, you can't deny that there's like a visual aspect. Forget the health stuff, forget all that. There's a visual aspect to when you are actively working out that happens. People treat you differently and you see yourself differently. Oh, so yeah. I was reading this thing that made me kind of think about that. Is that. And by the way, I should say this. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. This could be total nonsense. Okay. It's, just, it's just interested me. So yeah, yeah. That, that researchers at, at this London's University College found that human beauty stimulates a section of the brain called the, probably going to mispronounce this, ventral stratum, which is the same region activated in drug and gambling addicts when they're about to indulge in their habit. So like you get almost like a high to like to see something that you consider beautiful. Um, and you get like almost addicted to it. That's, that's kind of what it goes on to say that you sort of like get addicted to beauty. Uh, it says, when showed a picture of an attractive person, that part of the brain had activity. Didn't matter the sex or the gender or whatever. It didn't matter the sexuality of the person. Look, anyone that could be deemed attractive stimulated that part of the brain. And it's like a little rush you get. Um, so it says good looking people just do something to us, whether we like it or not. So the reason I'm saying all that is I, this, it didn't go into this part, but I do have to wonder if that's also true of our own reflection. Then if we start to like the way we look, do we get addicted to it? And would that feed into things like eating disorders? Cause you're so addicted to getting that rush of seeing a good looking person in the mirror or whatever. Oh yeah, I think so. I think it's, uh, I think, well, first of all, I think what we define as, as, you know, beauty, you know, is, is, you know, factors into it. And I think sometimes we, we are told over and over again that something is beautiful. And so that's what we start to believe. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, we almost Mm -hmm. have to, I have found that I have almost had to like teach myself that other types of bodies that are not the typical, like gym fit bodies, other types of bodies Mm -hmm. are also beautiful. Yeah. And I've had to like, reteach myself that to appreciate different types of bodies um but yeah I would say that like you know looking in the mirror when I had this uh body that you know that society as a whole thinks is fit and beautiful or whatever you know anytime and it was lean and I didn't have very much you know fat on my body and then anytime you start to put a little fat on your body it's like it, there's like a little bit of, there's like a little surge of fear, right? Because yep. it's like, oh, this is, this is getting away from what it was when, and what it's supposed to be. And I've got to get it back to what it's supposed to be. Um, so yeah, I think that goes, you know, how we see other people, but then also like, yeah, every time you see yourself in the mirror and you feel like you look good and you go, okay, yeah, good. I'm still, I'm still there. You know, right, I'm st- right. I still have what I'm supposed to have. Like, Yeah. It's almost like seeing that little bit of fat. It's like, it's not about literally that little bit of fat. It's you're jumping ahead in time and you're going, well, that's going to get worse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're saying before, like, oh, I think it's men too. I I think this is what my gut says. I have not researched this at all. Uh, Yeah. Tell me. And also we're talking in binaries here, which I know is not like very good these days, whatever, like just for this little piece of a conversation. So like, I think generally speaking, at least in America, like men, have more leeway than women do when it comes to body types, but there are limits. And like, for me, uh, I'm a, I'm on the smaller end of small for an American male. So my experience being a man is very different than my male friends who have never got anything said about them ever. Like they're, they're, you know, even if they're a little overweight, there's a little bit more leeway, but if you look Mm -hmm. too out of the norm, I mean, I get comments, I still get comments to this day that I'm just like, who the fuck are you? Some stranger. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I was just telling someone today, there was time I was, I was at a bar and this is the least offensive thing because I don't want to go down too far down this road. And, oh, I'm going forever, but like, uh-huh. and these people, and I think one of the points is like these, these, I'm just going to say girls because at the time, I guess women, I guess I, I get confused with that. I'm, let's say women, because it was, I guess we were in our twenties. 
um, young adults. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, weren't trying to hurt me. It just, it just didn't register to them that this was like, Hey, this is a little weird. I, I was at a bar and I was t drinking and out of the corner of my eye, I see her coming up behind me. Now, I don't know if it's me, she's coming towards her or any, so I just pretend I don't see it. I'm just doing my thing. Then she stands behind me and starts going like this, right? Like measuring her height to mine and laughing. Mm -hmm. Now I'm, now I'm curious of where this is going to go. So I still am sitting there, pretend I don't see it. Then her friends start taking pictures and they're all laughing and then they walk away. So they weren't trying to like, <sighs> obviously hurt my, but it's just one of those things where if you stand out and I think generally women get this more because they have less leeway. It's like, if you stand out in some way, for some reason, people just hone in on that. It's like, right. it's just, I don't exactly know what I want to say about it, except that it's weird. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it is weird. It's, yeah, it's like, I've, I've, I was actually just thinking about this recently. Like, you know, is it like why people do things like that? I, I want to, I'm inclined to say it's like kind of fear-based, but then I'm also like, but what could they have possibly been afraid mm. of when they're just purely making fun of somebody? Like, is that yeah. just pure kind of like hostility. I was walking um, down the street with my my partner. This was a couple of years ago. We were walking down the street together and I don't know if he can hear me. He might be upset that I'm telling this story. <laughs> but um, we were walking down the street together and he's taller than me, but a lot small, like a lot thinner. Yeah. Um, like he's, he's tall and he's just tall and skinny. Mm -hmm. um, and... I have a lot more muscle and fat on my body than he does. Um, and uh, somebody drove down just past us, like in an open Jeep, you know, they were again, young, young guys, probably in their early twenties yeah. and, you know, laughing. And one of them says something like, dude, your girlfriend's bigger than you, you know, like, and they just keep driving. I'm yeah. And, right. And it's like, who the fuck cares? First of all, like, yeah, I'm bigger than him yeah. and it doesn't fucking matter, but it's things like that, that it's like, but why is that just pure? Like, is that the people that are sitting on the other side of the computer, like just trolling, you know, mm. is that like, is that what the girl at the bar was just trolling? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I, I think, I think the problem is that there's not just one reason. I think some people do it. They don't even realize it's hurting someone's feelings. They're just yeah. going with it. They're rolling with it. They're kind of having fun. They wouldn't see it. Like I, I bet there's certain people where if you said, Hey, that really upset me. They'd be like, Oh, sorry. I, I was just kidding. And then, then I think there's obviously some trolls out there that are just like, fuck you. I don't give a shit. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. actually trying mm -hmm. not to curse as much on this, but it's not working. It just happens so organically. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but, um, and I, I think there's like so many different little nuanced reasons why people do that. However, I will say this. I am not someone who believes that looks don't matter. I actually think they do. I just think the way we go about acting on that is what we need to work on. Like I'm not an everybody is beautiful type of person. I'm not like, I feel like sometimes that comes off as a little condescending, uh, but hey, maybe I can change my mind at, at two hours from now. I don't know. I change my mind all the time. But for now, I think our bodies, we're such visual creatures that we can't say looks don't matter. But I obviously yeah. it's a spectrum. They don't matter. They're not everything, clearly. Uh, and then you know, that's not taking into, into consideration people who can't see. What does that mean with them? It, it's a huge discussion. But generally speaking, I do think looks do matter. Uh -huh. I don't know how you feel about that. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. No, I think you're right. I mean, it does matter. Like, obviously, you know, especially like when we're talking about who, you know, who you're attracted to, like we're yeah. sexually attracted to people for a reason and not to others for a reason. Like, yeah. so there, that does matter. Um, I think, you know, like at the end of the day, it's like it, what matters is so individually and mm. individual and we can't tell other people, you know, what makes them good or bad because right. it's not our own decision. Yep. Yep. Like it's, it's different for everybody. Um, yeah. The yeah. whole, like I, everyone's beautiful. I guess thing. that's, yeah. I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't disagree. Like, I think what people mean to say, I could be totally off mean to say is like, instead of saying everyone's beautiful, it's kind of like, you can't say what beauty is to each person, but I feel like that's not exactly what yeah. everyone is beautiful sounds like it means that's why I have like a little bit of an issue with yeah it. yeah 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 no that makes perfect yeah. sense that makes perfect sense I but, think uh, um yeah yeah looks looks are there was something I, I was gonna say for so long just like 
when people go, ah, no one's looking, just it's like, no, we all look at other people. We all do it. So mm -hmm. there was a friend mm -hmm. of mine who, who was like, I'm like, oh, I got a bad breakout right now. It's like, it's a little embarrassing. I hate my skin, but they'll say like, ah, no one's even looking. But that same person, if, if someone's like a little overweight and some of their guts like coming up, like, look at that guy. I'm like, you just said no one's looking. We're yeah. all looking at each other. We are. Let's just be honest. We are. We are. And at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, we're looking at each other and we're critiquing each other. And yeah. like, how, how, how do we, how do we come to terms with, with knowing that other than just being, I don't fucking know. And if there, I was going to say yeah, other than just trying to like, it is complicated. They just be, you know, like confident, comfortable and confident, you know, with their own bodies. But right. yeah, I don't know. And it's hard with something like adult acne when it's like on something that's on your face, right? Like yep. everybody's looking at your face all yep. the time. Um, some things you can hide, you know? Um, yeah. It's, it's also like, I think our brain yeah, yeah. are built to put people in boxes. So if you see someone, let's say with like a burned face or something yep. and you do a double take, I don't necessarily, that doesn't mean you're a bad person. It's literally the human brain going like, Oh, I don't see that all the time. What's, what's going on there? And I think that translates yes. to so many things in life when you're on kind of like the, the edges of the spectrum of, of looks or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. Um, Okay, well, yeah. getting away from this. Yeah, I no, I think you're absolutely right. Okay. Um, so there's a photo on your Instagram. I think it's says, interesting. <laughs> there's a photo, I think it's you as a kid, and it says, before I was shy. So my question is, when did you start to become shy? I mean, I was shy for as long as I can remember. Mm. Okay, so there, it was like kind of like a jokey I was like, title. I was, I was always curious. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, it was, it was just a jokey title. No, I, I was... But I think, I mean, for his, like my oldest memories are like, you know, school age, right? Like mm. being in kindergarten, you know, and that's when I, when I remember like just being quiet. Yeah. Mm. Right. Like I was just a quiet kid. I'd sit there and like, just not be, not, you know, not be seen or heard. Mm -hmm. um, and my parents didn't like raise me to be that way or anything. Like, you know, children are to be seen, not heard or whatever. Uh, I was just how I was for like as long as I can remember. Now you say shy. I just want to make sure we're talking about the right thing here. Like, do you, are you, you're okay. an introvert. I'm guessing you're an introvert. Would you consider yourself an introvert? Yeah. Okay. So is it, do you think it's yeah. actual shyness or is it just that like, uh, you're a little bit more hesitant to like, I, from when I, cause when I think of shy, I think maybe I'm wrong in, in this assumption, but when I hear shy, I picture someone who wants to share, but is nervous to. When I think of like an introvert, I think of someone who just doesn't have to share or they share when they feel like it. You know what I mean? Mm, I don't know. I've never thought about it. I would say, I would say a lot of it was probably shyness, like okay. feeling like I had things to say, but was too nervous too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. For, you know, fear of, and some of, some of it is introversion just coming. I mean, I'm definitely an introvert. I like to, you know, I, I get energy from, from retreating and being alone and quiet and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely a part of me that's, that's like, feels like I've had things to say, but I'm always reluctant to share because hmm. what if, you know. Now, has that changed over the years? Has it gotten worse or better? The shyness thing? It's gotten better since I started lifting weights. I thought, yeah. I because that was, that, that was to me just such like a, yeah, it was such a like concrete, you know, physical thing yep. that I could do something hard over and over and over and over again. Um, yeah. This is nothing like, I mean, it's sort of related, but it's not like the amount of work you put into something, but that's kind of how I feel when I, when I do really difficult hikes, uh, you get this yeah. weird confidence. It, and, and I was saying this uh, to someone else was like, it doesn't, really make total sense because it really has nothing to do with your social life well like i've hiked this hard trail why do i now have that boost of confidence but it does something to your brain i'm assuming that's kind of what powerlifting does for you as well yeah yeah it's just like yeah it's probably it's probably i don't know the science behind it but it's probably just this little you know little piece of positive reinforcement this little yeah. surge of success repeatedly yeah. repeat you know that it probably accumulates i don't know but that seems to make sense, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So I have a few more things here. I, I'm going to read uh, okay. two article titles, and then I'm going to ask you a question about it. Okay. Okay. So here's one. A Colorado man broke a Guinness World Record when he ran a mile in under five minutes while pushing his one-year-old son in a stroller. 
So, oh. <laughs> so my question is, do you, what's your gut tell you on this? Do you think if you took the top 10 runners of the world and had them pushing a one-year-old in a stroller that the speeds would even out? Or do you think potentially the whole uh, paradigm could shift on who's the top runner at that point? Cause it would, I mean, it's got to change the way you run because you're, you have a stroller in front of you. Or do you think Brett, yeah. like the fastest would still be the fastest and that would be that? I think the fastest would still be the fastest. So it even out, okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any, I, I guess- That's that would... really fast. <laughs> yeah. Like with the stroller, really that's really fast. That's super fast. I was gonna say, so like that's a very unique and specific, <laughs> specific skill. Uh, yeah, do, you, do you have any weird, unique skills? No. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I don't either. I don't either. You don't? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Not that, not that come to my mind, at least. Uh, I'm yeah. really good at getting pissed at myself. Yeah. It's yeah. Really Punching skill. yourself. I don't yeah. know that I can punch <laughs> myself. I mean, it's brutal and you feel so dumb afterwards. I mean, I've given myself black eyes, <laughs> bloody lips. It's bad. Wow. And you just feel so stupid. You're like, well, now I got to live with this thing for a week and a half. Like, <laughs> so dumb. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Here's another uh, uh, article title. Okay. Animal control officers free deer's head from plastic pumpkin. So my question is, oh, is, is that an animal right there? Here's my dog. Yep. Aww, here's my so, dog. Well, here's my question. Have you ever saved an animal? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I have. There was a there was a bird that was like a what do they call those? A pigeon. Couldn't think okay. of what it was called, right? Like a generic, yep. you know like bird that nobody cares about, right? That was in the middle of the road Basic. and it was really like injured. And so I, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, picked it up and I put it off to the side of the road and I was like, all right, well, I should have just left it in the road, right? And like get hit by a car because mm. that would have been a less painful right. death than sit on the side of the road and just, right? Like suffer for days. Yep. Yep. Um, but I put it on the side of the road and then I went home and then I felt bad about the bird. So I got a shoe box and I went back and got the bird and I took it to some wildlife rehabilitator. Um, it was a wild bird rehabilitator that was, you mm-hmm. know, 45 minutes of town or something Yeah. and uh, brought the bird in there. And as far as I know, she fixed it right up. I don't oh, know. I awesome. saved a turtle one time. I brought the turtle to the vet. Yeah, the turtle was, he was uh, at the lake and he had a, uh, you know, a hook caught between like his neck and his shell. And so his head was like permanently Uh, like this. Yeah. He couldn't turn his little head. So I took him to the vet. Hopefully they helped him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah, I don't know. You know, I've taken in a few dogs. I took in this dog that's on my lap right now (laughs) when he was astray and looked for his home for find the owner. And so now here he is uh yeah you uh, saw a picture of the baby bird yes yeah i did yeah. not save that bird yes yeah it's it's it was a picture of a dead bird basically uh and you mm-hmm. said that what, what was the story behind that again so the bird died my um my dog killed it okay. and so i i was i is had that my the dog time. that killed it that's on yeah this is him what a murderer he, i know he looks vicious doesn't he unbelievable um he's a really sweet dog. I think he just, I think he saw this little baby bird like fluttering around on the ground and it was like, Ooh, toy. Yeah. yeah. And so I was going outside. I had my laptop with me. I was about to go outside and sit on a, on the swing and get on this zoom call. And I open the door and my dog sees this baby bird and he takes off and grabs it and just gives it a little shake and kills it. And so I got him away from the bird and, uh, had to get on my zoom call and so I'm on the zoom call but I see this baby bird's parents you know like fluttering around and they're swooping down and you know they're trying to figure out what's happened with the baby bird I guess I don't know bird psychology Mm -hmm. but they look very distressed you know and um, I watched this go on for like 20 minutes it was a very long time that they were just like fluttering around back and forth around the baby and uh, it was sad it made me cry a lot I cried a lot I you know didn't have my my camera on Hmm. It was just a really sad thing to watch. Um, anyway, so then I buried the bird, not to like give it some, you know, proper burial. Like I probably 
if I didn't care, I, you know, just would have like put it in the back alley or something and yeah. let, let animals eat it. But I buried the bird so that I could hopefully dig up its bones later because I really wanted to have its little baby bird, its little tiny baby bird bones in its mm. skull. Um, and I, a few months later, I, I, I marked the grave and then I dug it up and there was no bones there. So if anybody's watching this and knows why the baby bones weren't there, I'm gonna I would like something. to know because I was very disappointed. I was, I was very excited to have those little bones and then they just weren't there. So I don't know if it was young enough and like the bones were soft enough mm. that they could have just says, broken down with the rest it says of its a body small bird eaten. decomposes into an unrecognizable blob in about a day and will disappear in three. So I guess depending on how small that bird was, it just disappeared. It just mm. whatever the correct it just term is blobbed. It evaporated, but that's not the right, right word. But uh, <laughs> 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 um, either that or I guess an animal. It just bird. turned into a blob in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Much. And it disintegrated. Yeah. Cause yeah. I, I, I buried it like relatively deep so that nothing could dig it up. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I had a whole plan right. for getting this baby, this bird's bones. And then they just weren't there. So. Do, do you collect? I actually, and I, I also went on to, um, I've, had, I've had a few bones that I've collected mm. and that I've ended up throwing out. I think there was a time when I was purging things. I was like, I don't need these mm -hmm. laying around. Yeah, yeah. And I got rid of them and I wish that I hadn't because they're really cool. Right. But um, yeah, I went on, I even went on to Reddit and was like trying to, you know, does anyone have read my bird some bones? stuff on how to <laughs> who took my bird bones? <laughs> who took my uh, bird bones is a good No, but there's, you know, of course there's <laughs> Yeah, it is. <laughs> or something, a title for something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe that'll be my my autobiography. <laughs> um but yeah, I was looking for like, you know, tips on how to, you know, how to like clean a carcass. And people are like, oh yeah, you know, you get these dermastid beetles. You know, you can order them online, you put them mm -hmm. in a tank with the carcass and the beetles will clean them off. And I was like considering doing that. And just ultimately I was like, well, I'm just going to bury it and see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a lot of work. All right. Yeah. It seems like a lot of work. And I was like, uh, where am I going to keep a tank with a carcass and beetles in it? Like, you know. Well, look, everybody send your bird bones to Lauren, please. Yeah. She needs them. Any bones. Any bones. Any bones. Okay. All right. I got mm -hmm. a few in the closet. I don't want to talk on air about it though. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, all right. So last question is this. Have you ever bought um, a, like a small item, something cheap, but something that was incredibly meaningful or ended up becoming incredibly meaningful to you? A small item. And if not, I, uh, I have a different question for you. Okay. I haven't. Well, hmm. or, or a turn of alternatively have you ever just bought a small item that ended up being really helpful in your life in some way mm. that you normally wouldn't think to get yeah yeah um you know like the only thing to mind is recently i got a new wallet that's just like a little flat card holder mm. Mm. and it's not particularly useful but like it just fits my id and a couple of cards and like you know a couple bills of cash or whatever and it's not useful but it's it's like one less Fucking, sorry, one say less thing that I'm carrying around in my bag or whatever. And yeah, it's yeah. small and it's minimal and it's it doesn't carry because before when I had a wallet, it was full of business cards and yeah. coins and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I don't need to carry around with me. I do anyway, the same thing. Yeah. So I really, really like my new minimal wallet. That's perfect. All right. Well, look, uh, lastly, do you want anyone to follow you or anything you do? Or is there like any internet handle? I always say handle and I never know if that's the right word, but whatever. I never know either. I mean, you know, if, if anybody's interested in watching me power lift, I sometimes post it on my Instagram, which is this is lift. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Also, you thank know, you so much for doing just this. Watching I really me pick appreciate up some it. Heavy things. Yes. Thank you. All right. I'll talk to you later. Thanks okay. for coming on. Okay.